in this month's focus is Ishvara in Sanskrit, in the language of yoga. And this translated is the source of knowledge. So I'm going to read a little opening paragraph when we get into our first posture. And our first posture is going to be child pose. So you could actually make your way there now. You use any support, use any blocks, blankets, whatever you have around you. If you want to fill in any gaps, see if you can feel restful in your child pose. Okay. So just be stretching through those arms as much as your body feels able to right now. We're opening, so be gentle. Always thinking and um, keeping ahims in mind, which is like our first rule of yoga, being nonviolent, being gentle with ourselves, compassionate with ourselves first. And then we can learn this to be with others, how to be with others in a compassionate way. So reaching fingers forward, fingers wide, and pressing down through the pads of the fingers, not too much pressure into the wrists. And just then go to your breath. Focusing on the breath. Maybe just listening to the breath, inhaling into the nose. Exhaling from the nose. Trying to keep the breath inside by keeping the mouth closed until otherwise instructed. Okay, so in your child pose, I'm going to start reading on Ishvara, which is translated as the source of knowledge. So Ishvara is the pure light of knowledge, the macrocosm energy of omnis of omnifis omnificence that we tap into through our inner light of knowledge and awareness. Although it is conscious of all our actions, it cannot act but can influence action. Actions come from the place of Ishvara, that come from the place of Ishvara, create beneficial behavioral patterns. In any given situation, a broader, more informed heart-mind allows us to see the whole picture, understand all points of view, and then act for the benefit of everyone. For example, a general contractor who has years of experience and a wide range of knowledge can anticipate and avoid potential pitfalls that a novice would otherwise fall into. Mm. Okay, so it's just some food for thought as we practice today. And if you're new to the class, there will be new, there'll be a lot to experience. So just bear with yourselves, be compassionate, work to your edge. And I'm going to suggest a intention connecting to universal knowledge, which is Ishvara, connecting to the universal knowledge. Looking for some learning. Yeah, what can we learn from the macrocosm, the bigger entity beyond ourselves? Okay. So now we're going to start um, stretching even further through the side body, through the arms, send the hips back a little more. And take three full breaths, starting to really fill up the inhalation. Exhale, let it go. Feel that letting go. And again, inhale, really filling up. Exhale to let the body soften. One more breath, filling up. Use that inhalation, bring in something new, maybe the universal knowledge. And exhale, let it go. And then we're gonna lift this torso slightly, come on to fingertips, 
Walk the fingers over to the left, keep the hips just where they are. We're wet, bending, side bending at the waist, yeah? So keep, nudge the right hip back. It might want to follow to the left. And then maybe the hands, palms come down, the thumbs touch one another, or the right hand jumps on top of the left. And then go back to the breath, inhaling. Three full breaths. Exhale. Let it go. Inhale. Feeling that stretch from the right hip all the way up the right side. Exhale. Let go. Which can help to let go of tension, anything that we're holding on to. Yeah. One more. Utilizing the breath. Exhale. Coming on to fingertips, walking back through the center all the way across to the other side. Same again, reach, 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 leap. nudge back that left hip. Inhale, fill it up. Exhale, let it go. Two more breaths. Making space as we let go of tension. Let go of what no longer is helpful to hold on to. And then the new inhalation brings new energy, new prana, maybe new knowledge. Exhale, let it go. Coming back through to center. And then we're going to come up onto all fours and find our downward dog. So first we bring the hip knees under the hips, hip distance. Make sure the uh, wrists are parallel to the top of the mat. Almost spinning those inner elbows forward. Tuck the toes, press down into the hands and toes to pick up the knees and pick up the hips. And then have a little walk on the spot. So picking up one heel, bending one knee and then pressing the other heel down. Let the head go, let it hang. You could even shake out anything that you no longer want to hold on to, any tension around the neck and shoulders, just shake out the head, let it go. Okay, and then we're gonna find our still downward dog shake. We're going to inhale, pressing down, point that tailbone up and exhale. You can soften the knees a little, you can draw the navel into the spine. Let go of the head. Three more breaths, inhale. Exhale, inhale, can you slip your feet just a little bit more, there we go, lovely, exhale, one more breath like this, inhale, and exhale, let it go, okay, we're going to now go straight into our next posture, pick up the right foot behind you and then bring it forward towards the right thumb. We're going to come into a low engineer sana. So wiggle those left toes as far back as they will go. Find your edge and the left knee comes down and just bring those hands to the right thumb. And if you wish, you can heel toe the right foot out to the right just to give you a little bit of steadiness. So three breaths. We're going to stack those domes. So the dome of the skull, the dome of the rib cage, and the, it's a more of an upside down dome. It's a bowl in the pelvis, keeping those stacked. Inhale, grow tall through the spine, reach up, and exhale, drop into the hips. Use the breath. Inhale, grow taller, and exhale, sink lower. Once more. Inhale. And let it go, exhale, we're going to take the arms up as well, and three more breaths, you can lift the heart, you can lift the crown as much as you wish, exhale, let it drop, two more, inhale, reaching up, and exhale, one more, you can gaze up if you wish, if you're searching for that universal knowledge, and then we take it to the right, we twist and wrap the arms around us. So that right, uh, left arm wrapping around the right thigh or leg as much as you wish, is helping us to find a twist. Inhale, grow tall. 
and exhale drop into the hips inhale grow tall and twist exhale drop inhale and exhale drop into the toes we're going to release to face forwards and then half monkey pose this is where a block might be useful so inside that right leg and we're just going to send the hips back we're going to hover the hips we're not going to sit all the way back sometimes we do in half monkey pose so just sending the hips back straightening into that right leg as much as you can point those toes up or towards your face yeah feeling that stretch so go as low as you wish until you feel that nice nourishing stretch and opening in the hamstrings of the back of the right leg. Don't go too far, we're still warming up. Inhaling, crown reaching forward, exhaling. Some of you may not need the block as you start to open up and you can put it to one side. Inhale, use the fingers on the mat, absolutely fine. Keep the length in the spine, exhale and hinge over the leg. Right, let's place that um, foot back down and come back into that lunge shape. And then we're going to tuck the back toes. We're going to bounce slightly to bring that left foot, left leg, cross it behind the right. That's it. Inhale to a halfway lift in the spine. Crown forward, tail back. Exhale, hang over and fold over the legs. Two more times, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, forward fold. And again, inhale, halfway lift, and then exhale, fold, bring the hands down. So we're going to pick up that left foot and take it into a standing split. It's an easy one, not, not too far. And then just let that left foot come back down to the mat and take the right foot back and we're back to downward dog. We're going to chaturanga now, we're going to come into a plank as we inhale. Gently bring the knees down and the full front body down to the mat as we exhale. Inhale, cobra, bhujangasana and exhale back, downward dog, adho mukha shavasana. Take a breath, find your downward dog, lovely. Okay, so we're going to do the same again on the other side. We pick up the right foot, no, left foot. <laughs> and then step it forward, wiggle those back toes back and let the right knee come down as far back as possible. Just finding our hip opener first, inhale, grow tall. And exhale, drop into those hips. Is it feeling better already? Are we a little bit more awake? Yeah. Inhale, good. Exhale. Aren't we glad we came? Yeah, worth the effort already. And exhale, let's take it into full angelosana, crescent shape. So when crescent, we're not bending from the lower back, we're lifting the heart and just opening the heart up, which creates the crescent. The arms might reach further back. Inhale, and exhale. Taking it into a wrap to your left. Wrap those arms around your lower back, left arm reaching around. Inhale, grotto. Twist and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Once more, keep that crown up, reaching up, and exhale. Okay, unwrapping ourselves and bringing our block under the hands if we wish, or the hands all the way down. If you need to heel toe the left foot out to the left a little, go ahead. Half monkey pose, let's send those hips back. Walk the hands to wherever you need them. And then crown reaching forward as the toes reach up. And exhale, fold as much as you wish. And if it feels good to flow in and out, you know, if this is better for you, in and out from a, like a runner's lunge to a half monkey pose, go ahead. 
We've got one more full breath in half monkey pose. And exhale, fold, fold. And then we're going to walk the fingers forward, place that left foot down, tucking the back toes, ready for that little bounce and step forward to a halfway lift, crossing the right leg behind the left. And I've just realized I forgot something on the other side, which I did last week. So I'm gonna add it this time. Three breaths to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And then to forward fold. And one more time. Inhale, reach up, crown forward, tail pointing back. And exhale, forward fold. And this time I'm going to get it right and roll up through the spine. Rolling up, bring those arms upwards. And we're going to side bend to the left. Yeah, inhale, grow long through the side body, through the arms. Exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale, grow even longer. Exhale, softening into that left side once more. And exhale, come back up through the center. This time we fold all the way down to find our standing splits. Right leg reaches back and up. And then we place it gently down to the mat. Take the left foot back and we find our downward duck. Just making any adjustments that you need. And we'll do a chaturanga coming forward into plank and exhaling down to the mat. We come up into cobra. And then back, down we're done. Okay, take a moment. We're gonna do the same again. We're gonna flow through. And we're just going to go from a regular crescent pose to half monkey. And then cross our legs, do our uh, side bend, and then we're back again. All right, starting with the right foot, ready? Inhale, lift it up, bring it forward. And Janessa, crescent pose. Left knee down, inhale. And exhale, bring those hands down, half monkey pose. Just send the hips back, just one breath, inhale. And exhale, place the right foot down, tuck the back toes, step it and cross that left leg forward behind the right. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, forward fold, rolling all the way up. Coming up through the arms, Urdhvasasana with the twisted legs and exhale to the right. Inhale, reach. Exhale. Inhale, up. And let's go all the way back down, finding our standing splits. Inhale, left leg behind us. Exhale, bring it down. Wonderful. Front foot goes back. Jataranga, inhale forward, exhaling down towards mat. Inhale, cobra, and back to our downward dog, beautiful. Okay, take a breath, inhale. Exhale, let go of the head, and then we pick up the left foot. So we're gonna step it forward and do the same thing. Anjane Sana, crescent pose, just visiting each pose for a breath. Inhale, and then exhale it down. Inhale, send those hips back, crown forward. Exhale, let it go, fold. Inhale, bring the left foot back down. We're going to bounce the right foot on the right foot to bring it forward, crossing to find halfway lift. Exhale, hold, hold. And then coming all the way up with that inhalation. Gather up the energy and exhale to the left. Take a breath, inhale. Exhale, inhale all the way up through center and then bring it back down. Standing splits, the back leg lifts. We step that right foot all the way back and then take the left foot all the way back. Wonderful. Chaturanga, inhale into plank. Inner elbows facing forward. Yes, and brushing the sides of our body with the upper arms as we come down. Inhale, cobra. Send those shoulder blades down the back. Back to downward dog. Wonderful. Take a moment. Mm. 
If you need a moment in child pose, absolutely fine. Go ahead and do so. Right, okay. So now we're gonna do a part two. We're gonna change the flow slightly now that we're a little bit more open in the body. Okay, we're going to step forward or walk forward towards the thumbs. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rolling through the spine. So we sort of exhale until we come inhale to halfway up and then we fill up. And then exhale again to bring the hands to the heart. Okay, take a few breaths. Mm, just feel the heat up here. <laughs> it's always a bit warmer, higher up. And maybe remembering our intention, connecting to that higher higher knowledge, the universal knowledge. Okay, inhaling, exhaling mountain. It's flowing through again. We're gonna spend a few uh, breaths in each pose just to find that in the body and then we'll practice it through a flow. Exhale, sit into chair this time. So heel toe the feet as close as they can toward, be towards each other. Inhale, grow tall through the side body, through the arms. Exhale, tuck the tailbone. So there's a slight tilt, a slight tilt in the pelvis, tucking the tailbone down towards the heels, which draws the core a little bit tight, a little bit more supportive for the back. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, keep that tail tucking. And maybe sit a little deeper. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Let's bring those hands all the way down. Step back to down little. And we'll do a chakranga first. Inhale. Come into plank. Exhaling, coming down to the mat. Inhale. Take that full breath. Exhale it away. All the way to your down little. Okay, we're gonna find our warrior one first. We're going to inhale and pick up the right foot to step it forward. And heel uh, at the back drops to the mat. So keep that right foot out to the right a little as you rise up. Inhale, three breaths, yeah, warrior one. So there's, there's uh, adaptions. You can have the palms facing each other. I like my little fingers slightly twisted in or interlace the fingers if you wish. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, dropping into the pose. So we want to find a bend in that front knee. We want to keep that right thigh parallel to the outside edge of the mat. The joint stacked, knee over the ankle, is really supportive. And one more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Then we're going to come into a pyramid pose. So we can bring the hands to the heart or to the hips. We straighten into the front leg. We lift our heart upwards. And then we hinge over that front leg as much as we wish. Again, the blocks are there to grab if that feels better. If you need to adjust that back foot, you can heel toe it forward. Sometimes we go a little bit too wide. And then exhale and hinge, let it go. Inhale, crown forward and lengthen the spine. Exhale, hinge in. And once again, inhale. And exhale. We're going to press down, bend into that front knee, pressing down into the lower body to rise up again into warrior one. Just one breath, exhale. The fingers interlace behind us to find humble warrior. Ready to uh, press those knuckles down or hold the wrist, whatever works. And then exhale, right shoulder inside that right leg as best you can. Let the head go. Make sure we're letting go and not holding on. Lift those hands high with your inhalation. Exhale, drop into the hips low. And again, inhale, lift up high through the hands. And exhale, drop into those hips. Okay, wonderful. Then we're going to lift all the way back up into warrior one. Inhale, 
heart upwards. And then exhale, bring the hands, lift the back heel, find your downward dog. Ready to chaturanga, inhale forward, exhaling down. Cobra, bhujanga, and downward dog, downward dog, Adha Mukha Shavasana. Beautiful, we're gonna do the same on the other side now. So left leg, pick it up and step it forward, spin that back heel down. So the left foot might wanna go over to the left a little. Inhale, rise up, warrior one, three breaths. I'm definitely feeling a little bit warmer. Rose, you're in the cheeks, I can see. Yeah. One more breath, looking for universal connection. And then we bring our hands either to the heart or to the hips. We straighten into that left leg, both legs in as straight as they can be. And then hinge to our pyramid pose. If you need to step that back foot a little closer or heel to it closer, go ahead. Find your pyramid pose. Everyone is very different in their bodies, in their sensations. So go what feels good, but nourishing, but feel something. <laughs> yeah, straighten into that left leg as much as you can. The back knee can be soft. One more breath in pyramid. And exhale, hinge. Wonderful. Bending to that front knee. We're going to rise back up, warrior one. And exhale to find interlaced fingers or wrists. Look up. Find that universal connection and exhale. Let's stay humble in our humble warrior shape. Inhale to lift up those knuckles, lift up those arms behind you. Exhale, dropping into the hips once more. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, dropping lower. Being humble. Always let's rise up into warrior one. And then we come down to the mat, pick up the back heel and find downward dog. And you can stay here and all child pose. Just taking a moment to take it all in. Okay. Wonderful. Inhale. And exhale. And when you're ready, find your downward dog. And then we're going to step or walk, or if you feel like hopping both feet together to the towards the top of the mat, go ahead. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, soften the knees. And keep exhaling until you come halfway up. So drawing that navel in to support the back. Inhale, reaching upwards. Maybe a slight crescent pose now. And exhale, hands come to the heart. Ooh. Take a moment. Take a few breaths. We want to feel woken up and active, but not overly doing anything. Okay. So we stay connected in the mind, connected in the body through our breath. Inhale. We're going to flow through the same uh, sequence, but we're going to add eagle pose. Inhale the arms up. We're going to sit into chair. Exhale just for a breath. Inhale. Exhale, and then release into a forward fold, step back into downward dog, or if you feel like hopping both feet back, then find downward dog. Okay, right leg lifting up behind you, and then we're going to step it forward to find warrior one. Black heel comes down, rise up just for a breath, inhale. Exhale, wonderful. And then our pyramid pose, straight into the front leg. You can keep the arms up this time. And you know where you're going, finding your pyramid pose just for one breath. Inhale, crown reaching forward. Exhale, hinging over. And then bending into that front leg again. We're going to rise back up. And find our humble warrior. Exhale, hands behind. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, let's go humble. 
dropping downwards, rising up again with the inhalation. And ex uh, inhale, arms up. Exhale, lift that back heel. Uh, oh, actually, no, let's keep it down. It's a little bit steadier. Just for a moment, sorry. And then we're going to stay here and open the elbows wide. Circle them back and down. And reach forward. Reach for that gift from yoga of universal knowledge. Take it up. Take it back and out. And this time, eagle arms. Left arm under right. Then we pick up that back heel. Are we ready to find that bounce forward? Inhale, it might be one lift, it might be a couple of steps to cross that left leg over the right. Now, once you've found that steadiness, rooting down through that right foot, grow roots. Inhale, pick up the elbows and point them up, forward. Now look at some point in front of us, beyond the arms, that's still. Inhale. Pick up those elbows, send them away. Exhale, sit into the pose. Two more, inhale. Exhale, sit into eagle. One more, inhale. Exhale, wonderful, pressing down into that right foot. See if you can keep that left foot lifted and point it forward, unwind the arms, reach them up. Standing pose, inhale. Exhale, two more breaths, inhale. Exhale, one more breath, inhale. And then see if we can bend that knee to take it all the way back to Anjanesa and a crescent pose, wonderful. Bring those hands down. Super strength and steadiness. Let's go back to downward dog. Take a moment, if you need a moment in child pose, absolutely fine. Mm. Okay, time to switch sides, ready? Left leg lifting up. And then we're gonna step it forward. Warrior one, inhale. Are we okay? Yes, good, warrior one. Pyramid pose, you see if you can keep those arms lifted. And exhale to find your warrior one, uh, sorry, pyramid pose, Parshvottanasana. Just for a breath. Exhale, let it go. And then bend into the front knee, pick it back up, warrior one. Inhale, exhale to find our humble warrior preparing. Inhale, lift the heart up. Exhale, be humble. Inhale, rising up, back to our warrior one shape. Eagle arms, let's do some prep first. Open those elbows wide and, and reach forward. Let's have that gift of that universal knowledge. Exhale, open it back again. And this time cross the right elbow under the left. Pick up the back heel. Ready? Here we go. Eagle pose, you can step, step, or all the way and cross and wind that maybe even the right toes behind the left calf. Then once we've found our footing, our low body, grown our roots, we lift up the elbows, point them away. Exhale to sit. Inhale, keep them pointing and lifting. Finding a drishti, a point of focus. Exhale, sitting. One more, inhale. And exhale, then we're going to do that standing pose. Rising up, pressing down into the left foot. Extend through the right leg. Reach up through the arms. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, one more. Inhale, it's good to wobble. Our ankles are strengthening. And then we're going to take it back to Anjane Sane if we can. And crescent pose. And back to down with dog. What a relief. <laughs> okay. Let's chaturanga out this time. Inhale forward. Exhaling down. If somebody's doing their laundry upstairs, <laughs> inhale. And cobra. Exhale back to down with dog. <sighs> okay. We're going to have a little pause. If you need a sip of water, go ahead. If you want to be in child pose. 
Oh, we're steaming in here today. <laughs> yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah, Catherine, go ahead. Good idea. Mm. Shall I see if this can be switched on? Shall I? Yeah. Let's see if it's already. Do it okay. All right, let's find our downward dog, and we'll just work through that one more time. And if you really feel like it, we could do five breaths in eagle. <laughs> let's see where when we get there what we feel like. Okay, downward dog, and then we're going to come to the top of the mat in any way you wish. Both feet set step, walk or hop. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, and then rolling through the spine. Inhale, halfway, and we gather up the energy on the inhalation. Exhale, through the heart. Ready. Okay, let's start with the chaturanga. Inhale. Exhale, mountain. Inhale, coming up. Sorry, we're going to going to chair. Exhale, first chair. Inhale for a breath. And exhale, let it go into a forward fold. And then step, step, or if you wish, hop both feet back into plank and then downward dog. Right leg first. Inhale, pick it up. We're going to warrior one just for that one breath. Back heel spins down, rising up. Look at all these warriors. Inhale, ready for the day. Exhale. And then rise up into preparation for pyramid. Straighten both legs. Exhale, fold into your pyramid shape. Inhale, crown forward. Exhale, dropping into the shape, folding into the shape. Bend into the front knee. Rise again into warrior one. And then we're going to take our humble shake. So let's get ready. Inhale and exhale, fold into that humble warrior. Inhale, rising back up. We're warriors again, warrior one. And we bring the elbows wide. Thank you for reminding me. And down. And reach forward. Circle those shoulders again. Back and down. And cross left under right. Spin onto the toes of the back foot. Are we ready? Let's see how we do. Maybe four, maybe five breaths in our eagle pose. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Sitting maybe a millimeter deeper. Wonderful stuff. Inhale. Yes, have we got it in us? Number four coming up. And maybe one more, inhale, standing pose, ready, press down into the right leg, keep that left leg lifted if you can, straighten into the arms, straighten into the legs, reach up, find that universal knowledge, make that connection. One more breath. Wonderful, low anginous, sorry, anginous and a crescent shape. Step it back. And then we bring it all the way down to the earth and find our downward dog. Super. Take a moment if you want to walk it out, walk it out. Okay, and then we're just going to switch that. Ready. Inhale, pick up the left foot, left leg. Stepping it forward. Back heel down, warrior one. Exhale. And the, uh, uh, sorry, Parshavottanasan par uh, pyramid pose. Exhale, and then take a breath here. Inhale, folding over the left leg. And bending into that front knee, we rise up again. Warrior one. To exhale, find our humble warrior. Inhale, looking upwards. Exhale, sending it down. Inhale, rising up once again. Warrior one. Open those elbows wide. 
all the housework's going on upstairs, the vacuum now, <laughs> reach it forward and gather up that universal knowledge and exhale, open them wide. Let's have the right elbow under the left. Sunday's a good day for housework, isn't it? <laughs> Let's pick up the back heel. Let's step into our eagle pose. Let's see if we can do that full five breaths. At any point, if you need to come out of eagle pose, absolutely fine. We'll bring the right foot down just inside the left. Absolutely fine. Picking up those elbows, sending them away, feeling that lovely opening in the back body and the shoulder blades. I've lost count. Is this number four? And one more. Let's do one more breath. Inhale. The standing pose now, pressing down into the left foot. Lift up those arms. Maybe look up if you can, find the drishti. Well done, we've reached our peak. And then we're going to step it back into crescent pose. Let's bring it down to the mat. Take a downward dog. Chaturanga. Coming into that. Exhaling down. Inhaling in Bhujangasana. And exhale it back. Oh, time to slow down now. Take a few breaths, either in downward dog, walking out if you wish, or a child pose. Have a little moment. Oh. And in your downward dog, your child pose, you can let it out from the mouth because we have got quite a lot of heat built up. You can let it go from the mouth. It's a closed pose. Safe to ah, let it go. Let's start cooling down. Let's start calming down the nervous system by tuning into the breath once again. Inhaling and exhaling, letting it go. Okay. We're going to make our way back to a downward dog, tucking, uh, coming on to all fours, tucking the toes and those hips up again. And from downward dog, we're going to come into Malasana, our squat position. Um, you step the right foot towards the right edge of the mat, towards your hand. And then the other side also, left foot towards the left hand. You can grab a block if you want to perch your seat on a block. <sighs> so if you're practicing going deeper, maybe your arms, forearms are here on the arm, uh, on the thighs, and you start to move around in the thighs until you feel a little bit of space and give, and you can drop and drop and drop as much as you wish. The heels can be lifted. We're all very different, remember? So work on what you're feeling and what works for you. Feeling something, but not too much. Okay, and then when you found your malasan, your full squat, let's bring, if you can, either the forearms to the thighs or inside the thighs or knees, lifting up the crown. Exhale, let the seat drop. Inhale, lifting up the crown. Seat just hanging there. Two more breaths. Inhale, connecting to that universal knowledge. Exhale. And once again. Okay, we're going to come to a halfway lift. We're going to send the hips up high. Uh, sorry, uh, fold, forward fold. And then heel toe the feet towards each other, maybe a little gap this time, and then lift into that halfway lift again. Crown forward, tail back, exhale, soften the knees and forward fold, let it hang, let everything hang over the legs. And again, inhale, halfway lift, nice slow, full breath. And then exhale, softening into a forward fold. And one more time, inhale. Up into halfway lift, exhale into a forward fold. Bring the hands down, step the feet back into sort of a plank shape. 
And then bring the knees wide, the toes are towards each other. We're gonna come into a wide leg child shape. And from here, we're gonna twist our child, lifting up the torso, thread the right arm under the left side, as far as it will go. Find a sort of a twist almost, so the right side of your head can come down. You might want to grab a block for your head. You may let it just hang or touch the floor. And then find a sort of a letting go over that right arm. Let the body, the torso, the shoulders drop. Mm, twist as much as you can. Opening up the shoulders, through the arms. Let the hips go back. We've got two more breaths, inhaling. Exhale to let it go into your twisted child for one more breath. Inhale. And exhale, letting it go. Okay, coming out of our twisted shape, bring that right arm back and we'll just switch left arm thread through, twist, twist, twist. Take that left arm through as much as possible and let the left side rest. Left side feeling heavy over the left arm, left shoulder. Exhale, let the hips drop back. Inhale, reach. And exhale, soften. Wonderful. Two more breaths. Okay, let's make our way out of the twist. And then we're going to crawl forwards, bring the knees towards each other to, together and let the whole of the front body come down, sphinx pose onto forearms. So elbows somewhere under the shoulders and we claw in our fingertips. We let the uh, toenails press down into the mat. So it's quite active. We're keeping our muscles engaged in the buttocks and the lower back. Claw back as we inhale and lift up the crown. Exhale, just hold the pose and let the shoulder blades slide down the back. Inhale, claw and drag the mat back slightly. Lift the heart forward, lift the navel forward maybe, crown upwards and let the shoulder blades slide down the back. Two more, inhale, and exhale, shoulder blades sliding down the back. And once again. Okay, let's release the elbows and make our way into crocodile pose. Let the heels drop out, let the buttocks be soft now, let the head rest, everything be soft, let it go, let the hips be, comfortable, let them drop and feel heavy, let the belly feel heavy, let the shoulders even relax, yeah. And just one more breath in a nice relaxed crocodile pose. Okay. And from here, we're going to lift the head, bring the hands to the sides of the chest to press down and find your child pose. A few breaths in your child pose, hips down towards the feet, let the hips go. Mm. Okay. So we're going to do uh, either a cow face legs or a twisted seating position. We're going to come onto all fours. Inhale, knees somewhere. Oh, sorry, knees together in the center of the mat. And again, it's good to have a block. Very useful. So we're going to pick up that right knee and cross it over, like we did in eagle. Cross it over the left leg. Open the feet behind you wide. 
That's it. And then walk the fingers back, grab the block. It's always very good to sit on. Some of you don't need the block and your knees can stay close towards each other and stacked. I need the block, so I'm going to sit on my block. So if this isn't happening, the right foot can just hook over the left knee and can stay on the mat. So if you can reach the seat of the block, stay in cow face. If it's proving difficult, just bring the left uh, right foot over the left knee and hook it over. And if you're sitting this way, cross leg, um, with the right foot over the left knee, find a twist to your right. If you're in cow face legs, not my favorite. <laughs> Inhale, grow tall, and then find the floor behind you. Walk the hands back, open your heart up. You can look up or you can look forward. And noticing your breath. You should be feeling a lot more natural now in its rhythm and its softness and texture. And two more breaths, inhale and exhale. Oh, the last breath here. And then we'll make our way out, untwist or walk the hands forward back to that all fours position. You can leave the block there for your Second side and bring that right knee back. So back to that starting position, legs and knees together. Switching sides, left leg crossing over that right. Open the feet behind you and then walk back. Yeah, it might be different on one on this side to the other. So just be open to difference, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So again, that left foot could be on the mat with the left knee pointing up and the hook is just hooked over the right knee. Okay, so wherever you are. So if you see to twist to the left with the left knee pointing up, or if you're in cow face legs, let's find the floor behind us and walk back, allowing the heart to open up to the macrocosm. Maybe imagine that there's no ceiling here and you're seeing that greater space, open space, the ether beyond what we know on this earth. It's two more breaths. Take in all that you need and exhale away what you no longer need. And for one more breath. And then we'll come back to that all fours position. Are we all right? Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh gosh. Okay, we'll bring ourselves to a child pose once again, just settling those hips all the way back and then let the head go. Be nice and soft and easy. Let the forearms come down now. Let the fingers feel soft and everything giving now. Back to the earth. Okay. We're going to take one more uh, posture on our back. It's a nice supportive posture. So use blocks or one block. We're going to do a supportive bridge. So walking those fingers back towards you, rise up and then just let the seat come off to one side, bring those legs forward. And then the seat somewhere in the middle of the mat. Grab a block, maybe two, maybe your whole stack of blocks if you want. And we're going to uh, roll the spine down, 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 down. You can use your hands, obviously. Okay. So once you're on the mat, just feel the connection to the floor and then press into the feet. The feet somewhere close to the hips. Press into the feet, about hip distance apart, your feet, and then slide your blocks or your block, whichever edge feels opening but restful steady 
under your sacrum, under your tailbone. So letting that pelvis just rest on a block, whatever size of block, edge of block, but feel comfortable, feel supported. And just notice your breath, notice settling in the body. Letting go of muscles. We're heading for Shavasana after this, which is an absolution, a letting go completely. Okay, we'll take two more breaths in our supported bridge. Lovely, and then we'll press down into the feet, into the shoulder, tops of the shoulders to lift up the hips, hold it there in bridge shape while you take away the blocks to one side. And then slowly and carefully let the spine down each vertebra from the top like a precious row of pearls from the top spine to the shoulder blades, to the mid back and the waist and let the hips come down. And just take a moment here to let everything be supported by the earth, by the ground. And then if you feel like you need to either swish your knees side to side or hug your knees into your chest, do whatever you feel feels nice here. You could just hug the knees in and roll side to side, just giving your back, lower back a little bit of ease, a little bit more space and comfort. And then we'll go into Shavasana. If you would like a roll and you don't want to get up, put your hand up, I'll bring one for you. Who else, sorry? Yeah. There you go, anybody else? Okay, okay. pillows for eyes, there's blankets for a Push a pillow under your head if you wish. Support under the knees, whatever it is, you find that place of comfort. And then we're gonna do a little bit of breath work to really let help us let go. We're going to inhale and fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up, and fill up even more and pause at the top of the breath and then out of the mouth we let it go <sighs> like a balloon deflating let's do it again inhale fill up fill up fill up fill up fill up as much as you can and even more and hold it and then deflate <sighs> and one more time fill up fill up fill up fill up, fill up. and exhale and let the whole body rest. If you uh, can allow your body to let the arms drop by the sides of the body, slightly away with the back of the hands resting, your palms are open. You're open to receiving. A very receptive pose. And maybe even imagine stones, heavy stones being delivered into each palm. And you're anchored down there. Feeling the heels anchored, the pelvis, the back of the pelvis dropping into the mat. And the back of the skull. Making sure the chin is slightly tucked into the chest. Keeping the neck nice and long and spacious. Everything around the face, the jaw is unclenched and soft. Mm, and our breath is as it wants to be. A few moments to enjoy Shavasana, completely still shape. I'm going to read a little paragraph to close the class. Ishvara is also considered a teacher. So 
Sorry. Let's get the right music going. Ishvara is also considered a teacher and it can bring about transformation. Just as a human teacher can catalyze inspiration and insight in a student's heart mind by the transmission of knowledge. Sutras state that Ishvara is the original and eternal teacher, not limited by time. All knowledge learned in the manifest world ultimately sprouts from the seed of Ishvara, this universal intelligence that always was, always is, and will be available to those who seek to understand the truth. to take a couple more breaths. Maybe now start to increase the inhalation to send some energy back to the toes all the way down through the body. Start to find some gentle movement in the toes, into the feet, maybe the ankles, into the whole of the legs and then into the hands, the fingers, same into the arms, maybe rolling the arms and legs in and out, in and out a couple of times or whatever helps you to wake up, take that sort of movement to wake yourself up, maybe a stretch in the body and we're fully awake for our Sunday morning, yes, yeah. Okay, when, the, when you're ready, the feet come to the mat and you can hug those knees into the chest. Give yourself a really good squeeze. Maybe sway side to side if that feels nice. And then land on your right side. Let everything rest. The arms, the head, the hands even. Okay. Taking a few more breaths here. You can start to blink open the eyes, adjusting to the dimmer light in the room. Putting all senses on. And then lifting the head up last, come up to a seated position. down by the hips, grow nice and tall. Let's gather up our energy into our palms. We'll send some out there to the universe, maybe to someone you know needs it, and then bring some to yourself, to your mind for pure thoughts, to your mouth for kind words, to your heart for greater tolerance and compassion. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. Namaste.